Woo! Hallelujah. Father, thank you. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that day is soon approaching. Yes. And we anxiously, dare I say patiently, wait. We keep our eyes fixed on you, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, we trust in you that as we believe and take steps to honor the vision that you've given each and every one of us, we know that there's a day soon approaching where we will see you face to face. We will answer you for the assignment you've given and we will gladly, rejoicefully receive our reward. So until that day, Jesus, we give you honor and praise on this planet. Lord, may our lives be living epistles that bring glory to you in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Man, good to see you, worship team. Woo! Thank you, Wendy. Well, let's, uh, my wife reminded me subtly this morning, you're going to get stuck in your review again? <clears throat> And I, I, I have a tendency to do that, <clears throat> but uh, thank you, brother, yeah. I, and, I, and I think you're right. We, we don't remember, you know? If I were to come out there and ask you all, what did we talk about last week? No. <laughs> I don't even know if we mentioned Jesus last week. <laughs> right? Yeah, we're talking about Jehovah Jireh, Right? So let's quickly, say quickly, let's quickly review, and uh, because here's the thing, you know, there may be someone here that didn't get part one or part whatever, I don't know, what part are we in? How much? Part four, thank you, Paula, we're in part four. But in Genesis chapter 22, 22 God revealed himself to Abraham as Jehovah Jireh, but you have to understand, in the process of that, because Isaac had been promised years before. And Abraham had waited and waited and trusted and believed and decreed that God will provide for him. He hadn't got the revelation of Jehovah Jireh yet. And so him and Isaac, the promise finally comes. Isaac has been born. Now he's, you know, scholars disagree on this. At least a young teenager or an older teenager, young adult maybe. And so <clears throat> they're on the way up the mountain for the sacrifice. And I'm sure thoughts are not only running through Abraham's mind, but Isaac's as well. And Abraham makes this statement to his son Isaac. He says, God will provide. Now that word provide there is the word that we get uh, Jaira from, but in, in our language, it is from the Hebrew word Raha, and it means this, that God sees, gives attention to, and distinguishes you. God sees you today. You better hear me. In the middle of your junk, on the other side of your biggest mistake you've ever made in your life, God sees you. Not only does he see you, the blessing is on you. Yeah, but I've really messed up. Jairus sees ahead of time and knows you're going to. Yeah. <clears throat> God gives Abraham this revelation, and Abraham calls the place. It's interesting. The same place where he took to sacrifice Isaac is the same place that our Savior was sacrificed for us. Same mountain. And today... This is the thing. Every believer, you got you to hear this this morning. Every believer needs the revelation that he is still the God who sees and makes a way. But now you've got to believe that. Because remember, Abraham, it took, <clears throat> what was it, 25 years. We struggle with that, don't we? In the middle of the waiting sometimes. Understanding that not only is God making the way for us, he makes a way for us to see him, to see what he's doing for us, to, to distinguish us, to set us apart. I want you to remember this very clearly today because when you're on your way up the mountain, this is the thing that I want settled in your soul this morning, the ram 
is on the way. Tell your neighbor the ram. All right, let, let's try somebody else because y'all, y'all ain't with me. So find you a new neighbor and tell them the ram is on the way. Okay, that's, that's better. Now, I want, you to, I want you to get this visual for a second here today. Because as Abraham and Isaac are going up one side of the mountain, the angel of God is orchestrating a ram coming up the other side. But what if halfway up the mountain, Abraham rebelled? The ram's on the way, but he doesn't know the ram's on the way. He's just trusting and believing God that Jehovah Jireh has a provision for him. What if they got to the top of the mountain and Isaac said, uh, are you for real, Dad? I'm out. You're old. I can outrun you. I'm gone. And he left Abraham on the mountain by himself. The ram is still on the way. Some of you this morning, you need to understand your ram is on the way and you're wanting God to soothe your, your, your emotional state because you don't know what's going on yet. And, you... and God wants you to trust him. It's easy to believe God when everything's going great. You know that? But if you follow the Bible, you know, I'm always reminding you all about this book, right? The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. huh? (laughs) Spending time in it. Allowing it to mold and shape how you think because the way you think is how you believe. The way you think is how you believe. I'm going to say this real slow. The way you think. The way you think is how you believe. And the Bible makes it very clear. This is, we've talked about the Apostle Paul out of Corinthians throughout this series. These things were written down for our admonition to instruct us, to warn us. Things to do and not to do. The book of Hebrews reminds us that all of our ancestors, they were all distinguished by their faith. Now understand, when you, when you step over into faith, you're actually putting an action to something that you believe. You're taking a step of faith, and you're trusting that God's going to make a way, that he's going to provide, that he's with you every step of the way. <clears throat> the thing that led Abraham to this place, though, you have to realize, we touched on this last week, Abraham was going up on the mountain to make a sacrifice, a sacrifice, See, some of the things that God will ask you to do, to de- ask you to do in, your, in your journey of faith will be a sacrifice. We don't like that, though, do we? We like convenience. We want easy street. Challenges. No, God, can you just go ahead and just make, make it all comfortable and wonderful? And, and you will have no faith. We talked about this. James and Peter both told us it's in the trial that that you discover your faith, that your perseverance is developed, and you know how to stand. And having done all to stand, you, you stand. You don't pick up and run and quit when things get tough. (laughs) Guys, there is a reason that the Lord called Abraham the father of faith. He led the way in this. If you think about history, he actually went to his, God went to Abraham's father first, but he quit. This is why God wants you to understand today that Jireh is with you in the tough time. This is why the Lord puts all these examples together in the scriptures for us, showing us, showing his creation how his world works. Huh? He reveals to each one of us things he's already promised us, things that he's already provided for us. You think about it. Is it possible? Now, understand, God has already made a way. He sees things, and this is where some of the predestination crowd gets out of balance because they take free will off the table, and you can't. If there is no free will, then I'm out. It's a beautiful morning, and my Harley's waiting on me. I don't need need y'all. I don't need to preach. If if it's predestined, if there is no free will, if you're going to hell, what you wasting time in here for? Is that too direct? 
What you need to understand is you have a choice in this. Just like Abraham, he didn't have to go up the mountain. God had the ram on the way, but he could, have, he could have missed the ram and never met Jehovah Jireh. Is it possible that in our provision, it's found in our vision? Because God is the one that allows you to see the steps that he has for you. He will, un, he will unveil the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven to you. Remember, his name is Jireh, and really the, the, the truest form of predestination is this. The Lord does see, and he does make a way, and it's through our seeing that his, his provision becomes visible. Was that, too, was that too much word salad? It's in our vision that the provision becomes clear as you see him, as you follow him. He reveals, I know we want the full plan. I, want, I know we want the nest egg, we want the 90 day, we want the two year, we want the five. What's your five year plan, preacher? I don't have a five year plan. If you really want to know the truth in five years, I'm believing that the, I'm, I'm in heaven. Huh? You have to understand, God gives us a way to see these things. Remember what he told his disciples? You remember Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he told them, To you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Who's it been given to? No, don't say us. That's not what it says. It says to disciples. Let, let me help you a little bit. Because there's a bunch of folk up in here this morning that have enough of a revelation of Jesus. Y'all know I love you, right? But you, we need some foundation here. I, I meet Christians all the time. They've got enough of a revelation of Jesus to, to escape hell. But a disciple actually follows Jesus. A disciple actually does what Jesus tells him to do. And to the disciples, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Not just people that are going to, get, that, that are going to escape hell. Y'all okay? This is why Paul prayed. I tell you what. Find, I know y'all don't have this, Paula. Find Ephesians. This is why Paul told us to pray that the eyes of our soul would be enlightened. Ephesians chapter 3. Just hang with me one second. We'll get right back into this. I better get some glasses on here. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 3, let's pick up in verse 8. And just, just listen to these words and follow along with me. To me, this is this is the Apostle Paul. To him less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold or the multi-sided wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers of the air. He's talking about spiritual stuff. And we're going to make it known. Why? Because we are the heirs of God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed, and you are heirs according to the promise. So, you know, when you start looking at the life of Abraham and you move on through to Isaac, and we got to talking about Isaac last week, and God came to Isaac and told Isaac the same thing he told Abraham, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. In Isaac. Who's Isaac? Abraham's seed. huh? And so last week, out of Genesis chapter 26, we looked at how Jireh began to provide for Isaac. And understand something, God doesn't change, you all. If he provided for Isaac, he's providing for me. Yeah? And, 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 and here's the thing. He blessed Isaac. Now, understand, if you go read the story, quick, you know, he told Isaac, you sow 
in the land where you're at. Now, now hear me today, because Isaac was wanting to jump ship and run. So many of us, when the difficulty comes, when it's uncomfortable, when we don't see a way out, we want to jump ship and run and go find something comfortable. And God told Isaac, no, you stay here in this land and you sow in this land. And so Isaac did what he, what he told him to do. And the Bible says that he began to prosper. He continued to prosper. And he became very prosperous. Say very prosperous. See, I know a lot of church people don't want to hear about this prosperity stuff. That's because you've been given into the traditions of men. All you got to do is study the Bible. Huh? This word, did you know the, the word prosperity is all through the Bible? It, you know, I, I study it a little bit, but I don't give it a lot of attention. Maybe I should because I, as I begin to dig into it, Andy, I found four, at least, I'm sure there's more, but I found at least four Hebrew words that we get our English word prosper from. And, and I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce these Hebrew words. I'm from Kentucky, Okay. But here's, here's one of them means, they all mean prosper, but they have additional descriptions that, that go along with it. One of them is excellence. Excellence. The other one is to, to advance and be successful. The next one is to have security and abundance. And then the last one, I could pronounce it, it's called Shalom. And that means to prosper, to be in health, to be in completeness, have peace and safety. It's all through the Bible. And the more I begin to look into these realities, the more I begin to look into being part of the seed of Abraham, the more a life of success, the more a prosperous life became a reality to me. Now, when I talk about a prosperous life, I'm not talking about a dollar amount. You understand? I know people that have fat bank accounts, and their life is miserable. They don't even know God. I know people that don't have a lot of money, but they have, they have the, the, the blessing on their life. And they pillow their head every night with the blessing on them and the joy in their home and the peace of God. And it's, See, America has taught us to look at, oh, you don't have, you don't have the new tundra? Uh, no. <laughs> Have you seen the price of one? <laughs> now, God doesn't care about price, you understand. Remember, I did a series a while back, and I talked about the Bugatti. Who buys a $2 million car, Kate? Somebody that can afford it. Huh? Somebody that wants a $2 million. I'm thinking, who in the world would buy a $2 million? There's a wait list for them. <laughs> Is that crazy? Yeah. And I know some... So, some good old Christian folk, well, you could have taken that money and fed the poor. Well, how much did you feed the poor with last year? Huh? Every time you want to criticize somebody else, back up a little bit. Amen? See, we need to embrace what God teaches on the subject, the things from his word, and we need to refuse to give place to, if you're taking notes, write these two passages down. I'm not going to take time to go to them. But in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, 1 Peter 4, 1, and 2, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy, not Peter, 1 Timothy 4, 1, and 2 Timothy 4, 3. What he talks about is this, people in the last days have given heed to the doctrines of demons and the cunning craftiness of men, and they want to hear what they want to hear. I can't tell you the number of people that have gotten mad at me and left our church because they didn't like what I said about something political. They didn't want to hear the truth. They wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And, and too much of that goes on in America. Instead of checking with God to see if, Lord, is this where I'm supposed to be right now? We give heed to these doctrines of demons and this tradition of men, and it teaches us, well, you know, a preacher shouldn't have that. Well, who should have it? Some thug that's playing basketball? Now, not all of them's thugs, you understand. But you guys, you understand money. We won't even use money when we leave here. Grave, you know what I found out? 
Money will just make a person more of what they already are. So if you're a turd right now, <laughs> did I know some of y'all like, did he say, I, I said it. <laughs> All that's going to do is make you more of one. You could have used something different than that to describe a situation. I know I could have, but you got the point, right? <laughs> Here's the thing, you all. I want you to notice this. Isaac's current economic situation had nothing to do with the blessing on his life. There was famine in the land, and God said, stay there and sow where I called you to be. Where I told Isaac, where I told you to go, stay there. Quit whining, suck it up a little bit, sow where I'm telling you to sow, and in the same year he reaped a hundredfold. Huh? See, the, the thing that you have to understand when we follow these guys through the Bible, they teach us these valuable lessons of faith. And then you take steps. You believe and you step. You believe and you step. I remember, I was thinking about when Tracy and I first started in the ministry. You know, I don't know how many years, it's probably the first five years when we started pastoring, I worked a full-time job while I was the pastor. I wasn't on staff at a church. Church couldn't afford, I mean, you know, they didn't, they were, we were little. And I mean, I can, rem, you know, I was thinking about it this morning, just meditating on taking steps of faith. And I mean, every, every extra penny we had, we put it into the church. You know, because there wasn't a bunch of, there wasn't a bunch, y'all weren't here yet. Now, you were part of the vision, but you weren't part of the bank account. So, you know, it was a small group of us that was making it happen. And I remember us, you know, sewing and sewing. Huh? <clears throat> I've heard people criticize, well, that, that whole sowing and reaping thing with money. What Bible are you reading? We don't, we don't sow with sheep and goats today, praise God. Huh? Go load up a trailer full of sheep and take it down to the slaughterhouse. <clears throat> huh? I saw an, I saw a news clip yesterday. There was somewhere there was a trailer full of pigs that got that was in an accident and pigs was all over the the place. And and they came and gave all the pigs medical attention to take them to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> I know it's, it's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Guys, learning how to stay in the move of God, to trust Him, th th this is when you need people around you to encourage you. Guys, we live in a world that is very challenging. I, I, I know it can be stressful at times. I know some of you all, the, the weight of things get on you, and you're like, man, I just can't handle this anymore. I want to introduce you to Jehovah Jireh today. He's the Lord who will provide for you. He will give you peace in the middle of your most stressful situation. If you learn how to trust him, I'll tell people this, and they're like, yeah, but you don't understand. I'm not Jireh. I don't need to understand it. There's a God that will help you, but you won't let him because you got to carry it all. Because you're the man. <laughs> not now. If you're whining about it, you're not the Anyway. <laughs> Learning how to trust Jaira when the weight is on, when the pressures are mounting. See, sometimes, you know what I love to do? To, because there are times that there's pressures with my job. And one of my favorite things to do is go get on my Harley and just go throw some dust up in the air. Get hit by some bugs in the face. Huh? And just praise God for where I'm and forget all that stuff. Some of you all need to know how to cast your care on the Lord. Listen, wait a minute. And leave it there. Most of you all, though, you're like my Abu Garcia bait caster. You'll, you'll cast it on the Lord and then you bring it right You'll cast it on the Lord, and then you're bringing it right back. You've got to slow, slow it down, work it a little bit. slow, huh? That's what we do is because we think we're going to make a difference by handling it. No, you need to learn how to let, let God handle it. Trust him. 
His word will give you a, a, a direction, a way to go. That's what he was trying to get Abraham to understand. That's what he's trying to get Isaac in the middle of an economic uh, fallout, famine in the land, crops aren't growing, there's no rain, and they're in an agriculture society, and, and he told him to sow. Well, where'd the water come from? We don't know where it came from. God may have snuck in there at night and put a little on Isaac stuff. Nobody else's was growing. Oh, did that really happen? I'm, I've watched over the years people in this church, the blessing of the Lord on, is on your life, and, 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 and things are going crazy all around, and you just like, you just keep coming to the top. Huh? God's word will set a course for you. God's word will, in his, in his message Wednesday night, he really brought an excellent point home about God's word being the seed that you sow. I think the title of his talk was, Seeding is Believing. See, you're going to respond to what you believe. And sometimes, see, some of you all today, because you've never stepped over into these areas of life, you need to practice some seeding, sowing some word, sowing some kindness. I know, okay, right? Sowing some patience and grace with other people and sowing money. When God puts it on your heart to bless somebody, do it. Doesn't matter what, God doesn't care about amount, you all. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the earth. He keeps the sun lit. You can have all the money and you don't impress God with your money. But what does impress him is when he tells you to give, when he tells you to write the check to the church or to, to somebody that you do it. Yeah, but Lord, do you, I don't. I don't, I don't really have that much right now. I mean, I got it, but it's stashed away in, in a good place where it's earning interest. I, I, I can't give that to you. Uh, now, don't be critical. I heard that. Wow. Mm, no. Lot, we, we've all been there. Uh, this is one of the things I love about my wife. When I go to her and tell her that the Lord's told me to do something, you know, if, if it's empty, the account. And we've never, we've never been wealthy, but if, if it's we'll right to check. Okay. <laughs> but we've always seen God come through for us. Yes. This is what I want you to understand today. I'm not up here preaching something at you. I'm telling you, we live this. To this day, we live this. We know that the word of God, once it gets settled inside us, yes. he's got us. That doesn't mean everything's perfect. I mean, if you've watched the life of victory, you know, the, the, the story and everything with our, with our church, it's not been perfect. We, we have, you know the thing about church? Y'all, please, please get this. It's full of people. And if you got a building full of people, you got a building full of stuff. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All of that. On any given Sunday, we have all of that. And that's okay. As long as we stay rooted and grounded in love, we look out for one another. We don't try to push our agenda over on somebody. That's what's wrong with today's culture in America. The, 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 there's certain groups that's trying to shove their agenda down somebody else's throat. Stop that garbage. That's why you have to turn the media off. They are the, they are the mouthpiece of Satan. I'm trying to watch some golf yesterday in the commercials. I was, so, I was so mad. Bunch of drug dealers. That's all it is. Just pushing drugs. Yeah, but they help people. Do they? Anyway, different message. What got me started on this was Will's message on Wednesday night. Seeding is believing. Listen to the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but it waters the earth, and it makes it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread for the eater, so shall my word. Now, who's talking here, you all? This is the Lord talking. And he's speaking through the prophet. And he says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. Watch this. 
and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. See, God sent us his word. Jesus, t- Jesus praying to the Father in John 17, he said, said, Father, I gave them your word. So you got to back it up. And he does back it up. Our problem is so often in the process of him backing it up and him developing us. Remember, Abraham was tested. Isaac was tested. Guess what? We're going to introduce Jacob today. Jacob was tested. See, God, God spoke his blessing over his seed. And it's still working right now. You, you got to get this today. Genesis chapter 25. Now, Rebecca and Isaac are about to have children. The next, the, the next line of blessing is about to show up. And in Genesis 25, I'm going to pick up my pace a little bit. so y'all, But y'all sharp, Bible people, right? Yeah. In Genesis 25... Verse 23, the Lord speaks to Rebecca, and he says to her, There are two nations in your womb. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. Now Jacob is the younger that will receive the blessing according to the prophetic word. Remember Isaiah, my word will not return void. And God spoke to Rebecca, and she said the younger or the older will serve the younger. And the prophecy gets put in motion when Esau sells his birthright to his brother Jacob for some carnal craving. He was hungry. Now, first of all, the pro- now remember, the prophecy is unfolding. Did it have to unfold this way? I submit to you that it did not. But anytime you put people into the equation, you get junk. What kind of brother? Huh? What kind of brother... Tells his older brother, yeah, I'll give you some food if you give me your birthright. What kind of jacked up brother is that? Sell me your birthright or you can just starve to death, man, you know, whatever. That's messed up. You see, Jacob's heart is already jacked up. It's not all his fault, though, because if you study the Bible over, if you read this story, the Bible says, parents, you got to get this this morning. Isaac loved Esau, Rebekah loved Jacob. What's going on with that? Huh? There's already, there's already division and strife going on here. And then because Isaac loves Esau, Isaac's older, he's getting ready to bless his children. Now, you know Isaac has heard the word that Rebekah heard. The older will serve the younger, but Isaac says, Esau, come here. Don't tell your mama. Now, this is G's paraphrase, all right? Go out and kill some venison. You know how you cook it up. I really like the way you make it. Jacob, he can't even cook. huh? Go get me some venison. Come back and fix that for me, and then I will bless you. Rebecca, nosy, standing outside the window listening, hears Isaac tell Esau what to do. Rebecca says, Jacob. Go get me a lamb. We're going we're to deceive your father for the blessing. <laughs> Y'all, huh? We're going we're gonna to deceive. Can, can you deceive somebody for the blessing? Well, we're we getting ready to find out. <clears throat> Jacob, Jacob says, but mom, Esau, he's this big burly hairy thing. Well, we're going we're gonna to glue, we're going we're gonna to put some, goat's hair on you. Isaac, he's, he's blind at this time. So they go in, they deceive Isaac, and Jacob gets the blessing. And then in chapter 27, Esau finally comes back with his stuff in Genesis. See, what you all need to do is go to Genesis and, and just slow down and set up camp there. And read these stories and watch them come to life. I'm telling you, some of these stories, 
if, if, if the church had the money, instead of demon-possessed Hollywood, we could make some cool movies out of the Bible. And they wouldn't have to be a bunch of basement product, cost-cutter special Christian movie. Huh? But we haven't got that yet, but it's coming. Because you're getting revelation of this, right? And so Isaac, and he's there, Esau comes back, and now Isaac, he's already full. He's already had all the meal. He's already blessed Jacob. And Jacob says, here I am. And he says, who are you? He said, I'm your eldest, Esau. And the Bible says that Isaac trembled before the Lord. And he makes this statement to Esau. He says, I have blessed Jacob, and indeed he shall be blessed. Why? Because he had spoken it. See, it's important that we understand that the blessing that was passed down to the next generation is always spoken. Parents, this is why you need to give heed to the things that you say over your children. You need to pay attention to the things that are coming out of your mouth. That whole favoritism stuff, you see it right here with, with, with Jacob and Esau, Isaac and Rebekah. They weren't even on the same page with their kids, and it caused division in the home. I know that uh, we, we, we try to think, no, God will straighten it out. God will straighten it out, but that doesn't mean that there's not going to be some fallout from it. You see, when you follow Jacob's life, now remember, Jacob's got the blessing, so Jacob has to leave. And his test that he will face the famine that he is going to go through is way different than his dad's or his grandfather's. For example, you know, in, in the Bible, names mean something. For example, Jacob, the word, the, the name Jacob means supplanter. That's an old English word. We don't use supplanter today. We would say swindler or hustler. Jacob was a hustler. Well, you can see that the way he treated his brother. Yeah, I'll give you some soup, man, if you give me your birthright. Now, once again, prophecy was unfolding, but did it actually have to unfold that way? It did not have to. The Bible is a recording of what, ha what actually happened. If he would have chose to follow and honor God and, and honor his father and do things, God would have just showed him a different way because the word of God doesn't return void. But when you put people in the mix, well, I believe God told me to do it this way. Not even one head nod. I mean, I hear that kind of, well, God told me to, to, to do this. And then six weeks later, well, God's changed his mind. Who, who changed their mind? Come, come on, y'all. When you look at Jacob's life, scholars of old, one of the words that they got out of the Hebrew language was heel catcher. Heel catcher. It's not a compliment. The Bible says as Esau was being born, Jacob, Jacob reached out and grabbed his ankle as he was being born. Huh? And he takes the blessing from his dad. So Rebecca has to, because Esau ready to kill him. Now Esau, he knows, he knows he sold the birthright. But see, when you get, when you get strife, there's stuff going on in, in the house, not just your personal house, but in, in this house, in your life, you, you open the door to the enemy. And so Rebekah has to send Jacob away over to the, to the land of Haran where her brother Laban lives. Now you want to talk about a slick guy, he's, he's going to put Jacob to task with the hustling. If you remember, when, God, when Abraham sent his servant to go get Isaac's wife, remember when he showed up and Rebekah came out? As soon as Isaac showed up, and, or Rebekah showed up with all the jewelry that, I, that the, I, uh, the Sir Isaac's servant gave her, Laban showed up like, oh, yeah. He, he come out and started working his, he was a hustler from way back. Yeah. So they send him out. And I, now watch this. Isaac is still aware of this, you all. So they send Jacob out, and in chapter 28, Isaac says this, May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may be an assembly. What's this sound like? The same promise that God told Abraham. 
He said, I, I give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you that you may inherit the land in which you're a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. And so Jacob leaves Haran, and on his way there, he stops and sleeps one night, and he meets God. And in, in this same chapter, if you, if you follow down, he, he begins to, uh, uh, in verse 13, And behold, the Lord stood above, and he said, I am the Lord. I'm the Lord of your father Abraham and Isaac. And the land that you lie in, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. Sound familiar? He continues talking to him, verse 15, Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord's in this place. And he was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. Watch this. The gate of heaven. And then Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he put his head on and he set up as, as a pillar and he poured oil on it and he called the name of the place Bethel. We would say Bethel today or the house of God. That's what Bethel means, God's dwelling place, the gate of heaven, the vision that he saw, angels descending and ascending. It's the same thing that Jesus in the Gospel of John said that you'll see. He was pointing back to this story. You'll see angels ascending and descending as a type of Christ. And then he continues on his journey and he meets Laban. And Laban, I mean, you talk about putting my man through the ringer. Of course, you know, Jacob shows up and the first thing he sees is Rachel. And the Bible says that Rachel was beautiful. Huh? And so Jacob has got his eye on Rachel. And so he goes to the father as an honorable man and says, uh, she, I, I want her as my wife. Laban says, give me seven years. Now, now listen. Work seven years and you can have her. Huh? And of course, you know, if you've read the story, that's when the soap opera with all the wives that Jacob had begins to unfold. Because my man stayed for seven years working for Laban, and then on the night of the wedding, he gets up the next morning and it's Leah. He worked seven years and didn't even get Rachel. He gets Leah. The Bible says that, the Bible didn't say Leah was beautiful says she has soft eyes <laughs> like, okay uh, and so Leah starts having kids Rachel no kids Rachel gets upset goes to Zilf, Zilpa her maidservant hey Jacob marry her okay <laughs> she starts having kids Rachel still no kids then Leah stops having kids. She goes to her maidservant, Bilha. Jacob, you want another one? Okay. <laughs> now he's got four wives. Out of these four wives come what you and I know as the tribe of Israel. And understand something, even though Jacob loved Rachel, Rachel didn't give us the lion of the tribe of Judah. Leah did. Huh? Rachel gives us Joseph. Joseph will be who we talk about next week. But what I want you to understand today is this. After Jacob's trials and testings, seven years for Rachel, seven more years for Leah, the Bible says that Laban, he changed his wages ten times, just hustling him back and forth. And God was proving him through this whole time. Why? Because he's a hustler himself. I can't help but wonder if he just reaped what he sowed. I don't know, just thinking out loud here. But when you look at Jacob's testing, Jehovah Jireh gives him a plan. You all remember the story? Man, my time is, just give me a few minutes here. I got to get past Jacob, okay? But you remember the whole story of the striped and speckled and spotted lambs? God gives him a plan. You take the stalks, you shave the bark off. When they come to the water, do, you know, when they don't, Laban gets, Laban thought, man, I got him because the majority of the flock is all solid color, so we, we got him. This guy's dumb. 
He wasn't dumb. He was being led of the Lord. He was being led of the Lord. The plan that God gave him made absolutely no sense. Take stalks and strip the bark off of them and put them in front of the water trough. That's dumb. Well, it, it is in the natural, but Jacob said, okay. So you have to learn how to follow the Lord when he asks you to do the crazy thing, when it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> and God began to bless and prosper Abraham with the same blessing, or I'm sorry, uh, Jacob with the same blessing that Abraham had and that Isaac had. And then in chapter 30, y'all okay? Laban comes to Jacob and he says this in verse 27. Please stay because Jacob's getting ready to take all of his kids and his wives. And, and if you go read the inventory, he had over 500 head of livestock. I'm going to have to get the numbers on this, but I had some things from the agricultural company that, that, that showed numbers of how much land it would take for that much livestock. I'm talking acres upon, I'm talking hundreds of acres to sustain livestock of that many. And Jacob's got all this. And Laban comes to him and he says, I have found or he says, if I found favor in your eyes, for I have learned, you got to listen to my man's words. I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you. <laughs> huh? He said, whatever you want, name your wage and I'll give it to you. Guys, there are some of you, please hear me today. Stop griping about where you're at. Some of you, your companies are blessed because you're there. Remember Jacob, when we get into uh, his, his son Joseph, you talk about the, the favor and the blessing on somebody. Well, it's on Jacob. And, and Laban, he, he's like, man, whatever you need, I, I need you here because I know we, while you're with me. See, the, the, the church might need a revelation on this. When the blessing of the Lord is on you, even those that don't know God, they'll see it on you. Because, you understand, remember Lot? Lot got blessed by association, hanging out with it. The, there's going to be people that encounter you, that's going to run with you, and they're not going to know why they want to hang, about, hang out with you, but they're, it's the blessing on your life. Yeah, but I'm going through tough times. What Bible are you reading? You are going to go through challenging situations. Every one of these people that we've read about went through testings and trials. That's why James says, count it joy when you find yourself in them. So what I want to leave you with today is a little assignment, okay? In your devotion time, I'm, I'm actually believing that you're going to do some devotion time, okay? I want you to start jumping over to the Psalms a little bit. Just every now and then, just jump, jump over there and find some stuff and highlight it. Actually, the Lord's got me working on a little supplement for you. It's called the Prophetic Psalm Meditation. And, I, and it's just, that way you don't have to look them up. I'm going to have it for you. I just want, but let me give you a nugget today, okay? In Psalm 1, because this is who you are, because you are the seed of Abraham, and the blessing of God is on your life today. Yeah, it sure doesn't feel like it. Quit walking by sight. You're still waiting on the situation. You're still waiting on your emotional state. Stop it. See, your believing has to get to the place where it, it, it moves from just believing to trusting. It's not just believing. Now you're trusting God. And when you do that, then you take another step. Listen to, listen to these words. Psalm 1. This is, I've, I've condensed it down. Blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates in it day and night. He will be like a tree planted by a river that brings forth fruit in its season. Say season. And his leaf will not wither. And whatever, what's a whatever? Whatever he does will prosper. Guys, I need you to wrap your head around this today. These ancestors that we follow, 90% 90, 90 of them, they weren't 
they weren't preachers. Abraham wasn't a preacher, he was a businessman. Isaac followed in his, his dad's footsteps, not a preacher, a businessman. Jacob, businessman. These are godly people anointed by God, walking under the blessing of God in the marketplace. Whatever he does will prosper. Who will? The person that meditates in the things of God day and night. He'll be like a tree planted by a river. And you will prosper. That word prosper simply means you're going to succeed at reaching your target, your vision. Proverbs chapter 10 says this, The blessing of the Lord, watch this very carefully, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one, what's that say, y'all? No, no, I need some of you. Some of y'all need to try that on like a pair of shoes. What, go on, say, what's it say? The blessing of the Lord does what? Listen, some of y'all can't even say it. Like, oh, no, you know, you know the love of money is the root of all evil. It is the love of money. It's not money. It's the love of it. I know a lot of people ain't got a dime. They love money. As soon as they get a little bit, they'll go in debt just to have something, just to impress somebody else. I probably should have left that alone. The blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. This word sorrow here means this. It doesn't come with hardship or toil or struggle. See, some of you all, like I said earlier, you're struggling on your job. You're toiling on your job because you think you have to carry it. You don't have to carry it. Do your work as unto the Lord, and when you walk out of there, leave it there. If something comes up, okay, I have stuff that comes up all the time. Deal with it and then roll on. Cast your care on the Lord. Trust Him. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Guys, you understand God is not opposed to His kids being rich. What he is opposed to is his kids being covetous. We want all that stuff, and our hearts aren't right. He doesn't care about money. He doesn't care if you have semi-trucks full of it, as long as it doesn't have you. The problem is most of us won't get the additional things of money because we haven't been through the testings like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob to prove us so that he, God will know that the money won't consume us when we get it. I think sometimes we have to get to the place where we're not moved by everything going on around us. Can I, can I show you one last thing? I, I know, man, it's crazy, right? I introduced this passage last week out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, but it goes right in line with what I'm saying, talking about what Isaiah had prophesied. Paul says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, Now he, being God, who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you've sown. Supply and multiply the seed you've sown. Now, a couple of things I want to highlight. If you take 150 times zero, how much do you get? How much? What if you take 25 million times zero? He will, God doesn't work in addition. He will supply and multiply the seed you sown. So if you haven't sown no seed, there is no multiplication happening. Y'all getting this? What I want to show you, though, is this word supplies. I want you to see this. In the King James Version, it actually uses the word ministers. In the New Living Translation, I like this one, it's the word provides. This word supply. So I looked, I wanted some clarity, so I looked it up in the Greek. And the Greek word for this word supply is the word korygeo. We get our word in the English choreograph from it. And you know what it means? It means to lead in a chorus or to choreograph. You know, Elena, I don't know if Elena's in here, but Elena, she does ballet. And so I'm sure that whoever's 
you know, the producer, they're, they're putting together, they're choreographing these steps for her dance moves for her to do. They're choreographing everything, every step, every move that she has. That's what this word supply, God, Jehovah Jireh, is choreographing your steps. But every time you get frustrated and mad and upset because you didn't get your way, you unhook. And the steps that God is choreographing, he's up there conducting this composium for you. And all of a sudden, all the, the trumpets quit playing. Jehovah Jireh never leaves you. He's with you in the ups and the downs. And when things don't seem like they're going right, that's when you draw closer to him. Lord, I know you got me. I'm sure there were many times when Abraham had to do it, Isaac had to do it, Jacob had to do it, you and I have had to do it. God has a perfect plan for every one of us, but that doesn't mean that it's just going to go, you know, cake and ice cream all the time for us you all count it all joy count it all joy when you find yourself in these various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance sometimes you just have to learn how to trust in the Lord with all your heart wait for it and lean not on your understanding what? He, he, but he's not done there. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. And the Bible says that he will direct, he will choreograph your steps. But how's it start? Trust him. See, you've got to get your beliefs dialed in, and you've got to trust, and you take a step of faith. And then you get your beliefs dialed in, and you trust, and you take a step of faith. And that's the life of faith. That's how Abraham, that's how Isaac... That's how Jacob, we, we learn from all of these. That's what Paul's point was. All of these things were written for our admonition. We learned from it. How to live the life of faith. But this all starts, this all hinges on the reality that you are part of the family of God. So if you're in the room today, maybe you're listening or watching this morning, and you have never given your life to Jesus, today is your day. Even if our church is not the style for you, I just found out this morning, what was it called, honey? Back to church Sunday? I didn't even know there was such a thing. I just found out to, today is back to church Sunday. Well, praise the Lord, maybe that ought to be every Sunday. Back to church Sunday, right? So maybe you're here today and this we may not be your style. That's okay. You're here right now. And that thought in the back of your head, hey, give Jesus a chance, 100% give Jesus a chance. This is not a religion. This is not a denomination. It's a new creation. It's a new life. And it's, it starts with one step of faith at a time. And it begins by you believing and speaking. Believing and speaking. We have this very simple prayer we say. If you're in the room, if you're watching, stop. Say the prayer with us. Give Jesus a chance in your life. Church, let's help him. Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me new. And from this day forward, Jesus is my Lord. Heaven is my home. And I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Now, if you're here, if you're in the room, do us a favor. Tell somebody. Let us know. I promise you we won't bug you or harass you, but we want to help you in your journey of faith. Let somebody know these things. For the rest of you all, this week, I want you taking the time to get into the scriptures a little bit, get into the Psalms, and let the Holy Spirit begin to choreograph your life. Jehovah Jireh has a wonderful plan for you, but you've got to be willing to step out and trust Him. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you, man.